Welcome back to another week of uh, Ramban Ala Parsha. This week we have Muschus of reading Parsha's Chukas. Just before we start, I got some feedback and comments about you know the room in which we we film these these uh, these shiurim. Um, they're not fake books. This is what in yeshiva we call Cheder Amsterdam. It is a I guess you would call it the rare books. Um, portion of the library. It has you know, hundreds of years old volumes. Um, for example, well, this is actually locked. You have to undo it. Um, it's, it's real. And you can just come in here and take out, oh, you know, hundreds of years old farm, including this room has books that we restole from the Nazis including a Mishnah that has Himmler's stamp on it. Really some, some shocking things. Anyway, it's real. This is the room we do it in, and uh, you're welcome to visit. Okay, uh, Chukas has any number of stories in it, uh, fascinating stories. I, I suppose the, the two main parts of the parasha are, one, para aduma, and two, the chet mei meriva and the, the punishment of Moshe and Aaron for, for hitting the rock, or as we'll see, um, I, I suppose you could describe both stories as chukim, right? The first is an actual chok. How in the world does paraduma work? What is it? And the second is kind of a narrative chok, as the Ramban is going to point out. Like, why doesn't the Torah tell us? If it's such a significant Aveiro that was done by Moshe and Aaron, the Torah should tell us what they did wrong, and it doesn't. Okay, that's the, the connection between the two. But let's start at the very beginning of the parasha. So it says the Torah, right? And people point out, Zot Chukat HaTorah, as opposed to Zot Chukat HaPara, or Zot Chukat HaPesach. Right? There are references in the Torah to Chukim, but it's rare to find the, the statement Chukat HaTorah. So we start with Rashi. It's a famous Rashi. Rashi says, why is Para Aduma called a Chok? Lefi shahasatan ve'umot ha'olam monim et Yisrael lomar maha mitzvah azot. Right? We, we take a lot of abuse from the Satan, from the Gentiles. We say, what's going on with this mitzvah? It seems like such a strange mitzvah. Lefikach katav ba chuka gizerahi milafanai ve'ein lecha rishut leharher achara lashon Rashi midivrei rabotenu. Okay, that's Rashi based on the medrash. That it's a chok. What's a chok? You can't ask any questions. A chok is something that we don't know the, the, the reasons to, and it's generally quoted as a machlokas Rambam and Rashi how we understand chukim. The Rambam says in the Mar Nevuchim that every single one of the Tariag mitzvahs is understandable to us. There may be some we struggle to understand, but it, there's absolutely a reason for every single mitzvah, including para aduma. And many people, or most people, quote Rashi from this, from this Pasuk to say, no, a chok is on that we don't understand. Maybe there is no reason. So I don't really think that that's Rashi Shita. I think Rashi also thinks there are reasons. Some are accessible, some are not accessible. Certainly the Ramban thinks there are reasons for every, for every mitzvah. Okay, now the Ramban is, is really going to have two separate parts uh, on, on, this, uh, on this Pasuk. The first is why it's called a Chok. He's going to disagree with Rashi. And the second is that his explanation. Now his explanation might be slightly Kabbalistic. Again, when, when I learned this from my Rebbe, Rav Ezra Bick, you know, he did it, so I, I, I think you know, it's accessible enough for us to learn together. But we should know it's, it, it might be al it, it may involve things that are beyond us, and we'll do what we can. But let's start with the Ramban's question. Ukfar katavti bi'inyan sa'ir ha'mishtaleach. Matam lu'umot she'yihiyu monim otanu bizot Yoter mishar karbanot shechapru. Right, says the Ramban. It's bothered me for a long time. Why is it that the umot haolam understand karbanot? They understand all these other things. Para aduma, they don't understand. Viyesh mehem shi taharu ki karbanot hazav vahayoledet. 
There are other carbonate that turn, you know, assuming that that's the chok. The chok is, how does a person become tahar, who was tamay mace, via the ashes of the paradum? He said, but there are other carbonate that turn a person from tahar to tamay. I'm sorry, from tamay to tahar. A zav and a yoledet. So, so what's really strange about para aduma? What's the chok? So he says, Ki mipne heyota naaseit bachutz. Since para aduma is a carbon that is brought outside of the base hamikdash, it is slaughtered on har hazetim. Okay, you can see the base hamikdash, but it's not the base hamikdash. Ye raelahem shehinizbechet la siirim al pene asade. It appears to the Umot Ulam that if you shecht a carbon outside of the base Hamikdash, that you're shechting it, God forbid, to some power other than Hakarish Baruch Hu, right? The thing that makes us unique, the things that make the, the things that make Jews unique, is that we have one base Hamikdash and one Hakarish Baruch Hu. That's what monotheism is, and everything is done towards Hakarish Baruch Hu. As a result, everything is done in the base Hamikdash except for para aduma and the sa'ir hamishtalech, which the Ramban is going to hint to now. Ki mipnei heyota na'aseit b'chutz yeira'e lahem shehi nizbechet la si'irim asher al pnei hasadeh. This, of course, is a reference to the, to the psukim in Achremos. Achremos has the avodas yom ha'kipurim. Achremos has this strange carbon of Sa'ir La Azazel, which is pushed off a cliff far away from Yerushalayim. And there too, the Ramban raises this question. You can, you can look at the Rambans there. And he says, how could it be that you bring a carbon outside of Yerushalayim? And his answer is really, you know, may raise more questions than it answers, because the Ramban says, well, you know, we're walking a fine line. We're obviously not bringing a carbon to Avodah Zarah, but there are forces under HaKadosh Baruch Hu's control that reign, you know, in the fields and in the desert and on the cliffs and in these dry areas. And then in, in, in Achremos, not in Avodah Yom HaKippurim, but the Torah describes, Daber al-Aron ve'al-Bonov ve'al-Kol b'nei Yisrael v'al-Martor lehem, Zaha davar shet tzivu Adonai lemor, Right? It's bad. Right? That's the mitzvah, and that's what the Ramban quotes. Right? The Beit HaMikdash basically asers, prohibits every other form of worship outside of the Beit HaMikdash. And here, the Ramban is saying, the Umot HaOlam say, well, I get it. You're different than us because you have one Beit HaMikdash, you have a center for service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. that's where everybody goes, and you have only one God. But para aduma seems to be otherwise. So Ramban says they're right. It looks bad. Veha'emet. So why do we do it? Shehi leha'avi ruach tuma usreifata kereach nichoach bachutz. Now, we're familiar with the phrase kereach nichoach, a pleasing fragrance. Reach nichoach ishel Hashem. All of those things are done in the Beis HaMikdash. Here the Ramban says, there is a Reach Nichoach that's done outside of the Beis HaMikdash. How does that work? So apparently it's to counteract something that exists outside of the Beis HaMikdash. What could that be? V'tam tumat hamet bi'itio shel nachash. I should have pointed out already in the previous sentence, v'ha'emet Vohaimet could mean this is Kabbalistic, right? Al Derechaimet certainly in the Raman means it's Kabbalistic. So he's explaining you're bringing a Reach Nichach outside of the Beis Hamikdash because that's where it's needed. Why? 
because that's where Tumas Mace exists. Tumas Mace is what Para Aduma is being brought to counteract, right? There is no Tumas Mace in the Beis HaMikdash. It's prohibited. It's a place that's cut, out, cut off completely from dead bodies and from shrots and from anything that could be metamayu. So the Ramban explains, what's Tumat Mate? Be'itio shel, so he has something interesting. V'tam Tumat Mei, ha-mate be'itio shel nachash, literally, with the kiss of the snake, ki ha-niftarim b'nishika lo yitam u'min hadin. Because if you die out of a nishika, the Gemara says there are four tzaddikim who never sinned at all, they died be'itio shel nachash. What does that mean? So the Ramban would tell you, and this is a, this is a, a fundamental p- belief of the Ramban in many, many places, Ein m- mita below onesh. Death comes because of sin. But that's how the world works. If a person dies, it's because in some way, somehow he sinned. But says the Ramban, what do you do with people who died bin nishika? And by the way, in this week's parsha, right, Aaron and Miriam both died bin nishika. That's complicated because they both sinned also. But that's the idea. That's why we have this idea, whether it's a halachic idea, it's just a hashkafic idea, that kivrei tzadikim einan mitamin. That, that tzadikim are not mitameyu. Why? Because presumably they didn't die for their own sins. They died shel nachash. They died Benishika. They died in some supernatural way, in some way that the, regu- the rest of the world doesn't die from. Nechkeket is kind of like it's quarried out. It's not, it's not the written Torah. It's the oral Torah, but what the Ramban means is not the oral Torah. It's literally from HaKadosh Baruch Hu's mouth. It's death that comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu's mouth. mouth. al Kain hi para vihi aduma mi midat hadin. Okay, I'm not sure exactly why that means that it's a para. But vihi aduma mi midat hadin. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has different, you know, levels of existence. So, so para aduma relates to midat hadin because it affects and it is involved with death, which is generally seen as midat hadin. Unetana la elazar lehe asot lefanav afilu al yadzar, and elazar the skan is put in charge of it. What's interesting is he doesn't have to shech the para; he doesn't have to do anything. He's just responsible to make sure that a carbon that's brought bachutz, which is dangerous, is done properly and done with the proper kavana, not, God forbid, for some form of Odazara. That's the distinction. Yes, we're bringing a carbon outside of the base Hamikdash. But the assistant Kohen Gadol, the Skan Kohen Gadol, is there to make sure that it's all done properly and with the right Kavana. So what does this mean? So I think the idea is that Para Aduma in the Ramban is obviously counteracts the idea of death. The Chok might be death itself. Zot Chukata Torah may be, you know, the Rav talked about this a lot, the idea that we're never ever going to defeat death. Like, death is a chok. It, it can't be overcome by human beings. And death is caused by sin. As opposed to those rare people who died bin nishika, right? The Ramban in Breshi says, Kal nafach mi nafach, vayipach ba'apav nishmat chayim. God literally breathed the breath of life into us. Presumably, God could also take out the breath of life. And that's how tzaddikim die. And that's the idea of hanechkeket bahen min ha-Torah. It's not Torah shebichsav, it's Torah sheba'al peh. It's literally HaKadosh Baruch Hu's mouth that's 
that's taking the life away from tzaddikim. That's why there's no tuma for, for tzaddikim who die, as opposed to the rest of us who die because of our sins, and we are mitame, and therefore we have to leave the people who are tummy have to stay outside of the Beis HaMikdash. The carbon has to be brought outside of the Beis HaMikdash. And that's how somehow or another the Tahara process is effected. Okay, I, I did my best on this Ramban. It's a longer one. The Kabbalistic ideas may be beyond us. I think we've gotten some basic ideas. Hopefully it's helpful. Okay, now to the story of uh, Moshe and Aaron and, uh, and May Mariva. So the main Ramban we did last year, and like we've sort of agreed to do this year, I'm going to review it quickly to sort of make the main points. So the Ramban there says, obviously the question is, you know, what's the sin of Moshe and Aaron? So Rashi there says, so first of all, the, the Ramban says, Hachet b'Moshe v'Aharon b'Meim Riva eino mit parsem b'Katov. Right? There's something, there's something missing in the Torah. Why they were punished is not there. And so it's okay, we have to fill it in. So Rashi there, the famous Rashi says, no, they were told to speak to the rock. And rather than speaking to the rock, they hit the rock. Okay, and that's a terrible thing because the great, the Kiddush Hashem that would have been brought about if the rock listened to Moshe and Aaron speaking to them was far greater than anything that would have happened from them hitting the rock. Okay, the Ramban rejects that because he thinks hitting the rock and bringing water out of it is a pretty big miracle in and of itself. You know, it just seems like a marginal difference between speaking and hitting. Then the Ramban quotes the Rambam from the Moran of Uchim, where the Ram has a very interesting idea. And the Rambam thinks he solved the problem completely. Moshe says, Shimunah ha-morim ha-minasel says the Rambam, Moshe lost his temper. Now, for most of us, that's not a terrible sin. Because it happens from time to time. But he says, for Moshe Rabbeinu the Adon Hanavim, the person to whom people looked for moral perfection, any slip up, any sin, certainly in the Rambam had a, had a soft spot for, for tempers. Right? So any sin would be terrible. Therefore, our Kaddish Baruch Hu had to take Moshe's life because Moshe lost his temper in front of Klal Yisrael. The Ramban thinks there's absolutely no source for this in the Psukim. There's no reason to think it's true. And because the Ramban's great love for Aaron, as we've mentioned before, he says, Ki Aaron lo ka'as miyamav, ki bishalom uva mishor halach me'odo Aaron was the most placid, calm person. He would never lose his temper. The idea that Moshe and Aaron lost the temper, unacceptable to the Ramban. Okay, so then why? So he quotes Rabbeinu Hanano. And this, I think, is classic Ramban that he would go with this, with this shita um, for the Muraglim. Rabbeinu Hananel says, yes, that Moshe was told to take the mata. So if Moshe was told to take the mata, obviously he was supposed to use it. So what's the answer? Ki hachetu amram hamin hasel hazen the problem, says Rabbeinu Hanan, and the Ramban likes this, is that you could have misunderstood Moshe and Aaron to be saying, do you want us to bring water out of the rock, as opposed to, do you want HaKadosh Baruch Hu to make a miracle and bring water out of the rock? And the distinction between who Moshe was and who HaKadosh Baruch Hu was could have been blurred here. And Bnei Yisrael could have understood that Moshe was doing the miracle on his own. The Ramban is clear. God forbid that Moshe Rabbeinu meant this. He couldn't have meant it. He knew HaKadosh Baruch Hu better than all of us. The Ramban goes out of his way to talk about Moshe's close relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But Moshe is responsible for the impression that he gives to Klal Yisrael. And it could be that Moshe gave the wrong impression and therefore he had to be punished. Okay, the Ramban also has a Kabbalistic explanation which I don't understand at all. But those are the four explanations brought by the Ramban for, for Moshe Rabbeinu. The main one being that the sin of Moshe Rabbeinu was, what it, was that he said, I mean, Asel Hazen Notsi Lachem, as opposed to Yotzi Hashem Lachem Mayim. It's also classic Ramban in that, on the one hand, 
right? It's clear that Moshe and Aaron sinned. That's why they're punished. On the other hand, you know, you don't want to go finding terrible Averos for Moshe and Aaron. You know, they're, they're tzaddikim gemurim. So the Raman finds something that, you know, could be seen as an Avera and could have terrible repercussions. But, okay, Moshe wasn't sensitive to it, but it wasn't as if Moshe did something terribly wrong. Most people think in the Ramban, you know, the Ramban, because he saw Moshe Rabbeinu, because he saw Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, because he saw biblical figures in 3D, that the Ramban was like looking for mistakes or looking for Avera. God forbid. The Ramban is not like that at all, but the Ramban finds something when it's clear that something went wrong, when it's clear that's the pshat. So he finds something. Avram Avinu, he says, Kan chata Avram Avinu chait gadol bishgaga. God forbid that it was a real sin. It was an accidental sin. It was a mistaken sin. Same thing with Moshe here. He used the wrong word. He didn't intend for that to be the result, but he did it. And therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to punish him because HaKadosh Baruch Hu midakdek b'tzadikim kichut ha-se'ara, something that me and you do and may go unpunished. When Moshe does it, when Aaron does it, it has to be punished. Okay, now, despite that being the main Ramban, there are other Rambans on the Chet of Meim Riva, and certainly the next one might be seen as contradictory to what the Ramban just said, which may allow us to think it wasn't really what the Ramban thinks, it was really the Kabbalistic explanation, hard to know. Says the Torah, exactly the Pasuk we're talking about, Hamin hasela hazen otzila chemayim. So first of all, the Ramban says, like passionately, Chalila, Chalila sheyihiyeh hatema liminiyut. It can't be that Moshe was saying to them, Hamin hasel zen otzila chemayim, and he expected the people to yell out, no, God can't do that. Can't be. Ki Moshe Rabbeinu hanaeman b'chol beit Hashem lo yipalem yimenu kol davar me Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu knew God makes miracles. V'hu v'chol Yisrael imo ra'u gidolot haniflot mizo. This would not be the biggest miracle. It would, it would pale in comparison to Kriyas Yamsov, to Makas Bechoros. Va'av ki hu asher na'aseh kein al yado pa'am achet batzor bechorev. Moshe has already brought water out of a rock. So how could he want to say, Hamin Hasel has this question, like a rhetorical question, the answer to which is no, for sure not. V'amu ha'mefarshim sheyesh t'mihot mit kaimot, kimo ha'niglo nigleti, Right in, in Gan Eden, he said, so there are Mepharshim who say, yes, that it, it is a rhetorical question. But he doesn't think so. Aval Rabbi Avraham Katav, Hamin Hasel Azei Yesh Lanu Koach Lo Right? It was a question, the answer to which is, yes, we believe that you could. Everything is from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Of course we could do it. And that's what God's going to do. Okay, so the Ibn Ezra is the exact opposite of the other Mepharshim. It is a rhetorical question, but it's a rhetorical question, the answer to which is, yes, of course God could do that stuff. Okay, now we come to the Ramban, which isn't that different in the Ibn Ezra, but it's slightly different. Ulfi dati, hahei hazo, hamin hasel, this question it's a real question. Moshe is saying to me, so what do you think? Do you think we can bring water out of this rock or not? Sometimes the Torah finishes the sentence, sometimes it doesn't. So for example, Hayesh ba'etz im ayin. Right? The Torah could have just said, You would know the other option is maybe it doesn't have trees. But there the Torah says, right? Sometimes the Torah doesn't finish a statement. When, uh, when Yosef says to the brothers, Is this really Binyamin? 
He doesn't say or not, but it's the same thing. Okay. This is exactly the test. They were testing God. God is testing them. Omar. Shimuna Hamorim. Ma Tachshivun al Hashem. He says, listen to me, you rebels. What do you think of Kaddish Baruch Hu? What do you think of our Kaddish Baruch Hu? Hamin Hazela Hazeh, Hamin Hazela Hazeh Hachazak, Notzila Chamayim. Should we bring water out of this, this solid rock, this strong rock? Hayihiye Hadavar Hazeim Lo. Can it be? He flig bimarim vihigid kihem kitane amana. He's insulting them. They don't believe in God the way they should. Vikashe Yarivu I love who? They were testing God, and now Moshe is testing them. Now I'm skipping a little bit. So he, he goes, he gives more examples. More examples. Right? These are all questions. Ki kulam she'elot. Aval inyanam lishol bidava mifursam she'yode bo hanishal al karcho. He wanted the people to step back and say, yes, we've challenged HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Can he bring water out of a rock? He can do anything. He's done all these miracles for us in the past. Now Moshe Rabbeinu is saying to them, don't you recognize that to bring you water out of a rock is nothing for HaKadosh Baruch Hu? But he's asking it as a real question. He wants them to think about it and then to be embarrassed that they challenged HaKadosh Baruch Hu the way that they did. Right? This is a story that took place before. Next, Ramban. We'll do this quickly. Right? This is Rashi. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu it's like Nadav and Aviyu. Shenema Bikrovai Kadesh. What does it mean Bikrovai Kadesh? That Bikrovim to me, I'm going to be Mikadesh myself. When he killed Nadav and Aviyu, so you see that, you know, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Midaktek, Bichut Kechut Asa'ara, both on Tzadikim and Rishaim, and therefore people fear God. Says the Ramah, yeah, but what's he talking about? Moshe and Aaron didn't die at the, at May Meriva. Yes, God told them they would die. Eventually they would die. But they didn't die then. So it's different. When Merv and Aviyu walked out, when Uzzah was hit by a bolt of lightning when he, took, when he touched the Aaron, it was Bikrovai HaKadosh. When Nadav and Aviyu were killed in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, it was Bikrovai HaKadosh. But here, not so. And says the Ramban, sort of just to summarize everything with respect to the, the story of Meim Riva, he says, when the Torah says, Vayikadesh bam, the bum is not Moshe and Aaron. The bum is Klal Yisrael. All of Klal Yisrael were standing watching. Different than the first time when Moshe hit the rock at Har Sinai. Here, everybody, all of Klal Yisrael was standing there. And says the Raman, it was a Kiddush Hashem. When Moshe hit the rock and water came out, Vayikadesh bam, HaKadosh Baruch was sanctified in front of Klal Yisrael. You know, we're, we're so depressed by the story because Moshe and Aaron are punished and don't go into Eretz Yisrael, and it's painful. You know, we feel close to them. It, it hurts. But says the Ramban, in the story, it's a big Kiddush Hashem. Moshe hits the rock. None of this talking to the rock business. None of this rash. Moshe hits the rock. It's a huge Kiddush Hashem. And the Torah says, God was sanctified at May Meriva despite the fact that Moshe and Aaron did something wrong. What did they do wrong? Again, we've, we've discussed that. We've discussed the fact that Ramban thinks perhaps it was understandable from their words that they were doing the miracle and not HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Okay, we saw today, so let's stop, let's stop here. We saw today a possible explanation for why Paradum is a chok, a, it's a chok that the goyim attack us on because it's done outside of the Beis Hamikdash, like this Sarih HaMishtaleach. I tried to explain it's done outside of the Beis Hamikdash because it relates to death. 
And death doesn't exist in the Beis HaMikdash. Death exists outside of the Beis HaMikdash. And it has to do with HaKadosh Baruch Hu's breath and people, tzaddikim, dying ben as opposed to regular people who die as a result of sin. We talked about the sin of Meim Riva and what Bnei Yisrael did wrong. We talked about the Ramban saying the question, Hamin Hazel, Hasela Hazen, Otzilach Hamayim, is a real question, forcing Bnei Yisrael to revisit and reevaluate their relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And finally, Vayikadesh Bam, despite all the bad things we think happened in Meim Riva, HaKadosh Baruch Hu was in fact sanctified through Moshe hitting the rock and water gushing out of it. Okay, that's it for today. Yashkoch to everybody. Shabbat Shalom. And I'll see you next week, God willing. Thank you.